Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how in Blender we can take a P and G pattern with alpha transparency and apply it to the material of an object so that we can have the pattern show through and all of the transparent areas should be invisible so that anything else we want to include in our shader for the material will show through behind that pattern top layer. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create a material. So we'll just apply one to this default cube. I'm going to select the cube, go over to the materials tab. And here, if one isn't created, you can just go ahead and hit this new button instead. So as long as you have one in the slot, we can start working with this principled BSDF shader. So I'm going to go over to the shading tab in Blender. And here we should see the node graph for this basic setup. So we have the shader right here, the final material output, and we need to plug the image texture into the base color. So in order to load the image as a texture into Blender, I'm going to hit Shift A, and we're going to go to search, and I'm going to look for image texture. Just type an image and it should show up. So here we need to locate a file on the computer to serve as the image texture. I'm going to go ahead and hit open image. Let's go to my desktop where I have a few patterns downloaded and grab one of them. So let's just grab this ornamental pattern into here. And we could just take the color and plug that directly into the base color here. But that's not going to show up correctly. So on the left over here, if I open up the same image that we just loaded in the ornamental pattern, and we can see that this pattern clearly does have some transparency. So why is it not showing up on the final output? Why are we just getting this black material here? And that has to do with the alpha of this texture. So in order for the alpha channel or the transparency to go through, we need to add in a mix RGB shader. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to search, and I'm going to type in mix. Let's find that mix RGB. So I'm going to drop this new node between color and base color on the final principled BSDF. So this node has so this node has an input called factor and we can plug the alpha channel into the factor in order to control whether it should be showing color one or color two. So that's going to be the uh, color from the image texture or any other color that we have set up in this node graph. So let's go ahead and plug the alpha channel in there. Now you can see right now that the colors are inverted. So we actually need to take the connection from color to color one and change that to color two. So I'm going to hold shift and then right click with the mouse and cut the connector between color and color one. And now I'm going to take color and connect that to color two. So now this should be looking correctly. The pattern actually comes through as black and everything else coming from this texture is transparent. And as you can see, everything that is not that drawn on black pattern gets filled by this color one. So we can change the color one to any other color we want to show through for all of those other spaces. Or we could actually have um, more nodes set up in order to feed into that color one. So for instance, if I wanted to texture each side of this a different color, I could bring in a color palette. So I'm going to add a new image texture and I'm going to open this from my computer, a few color palettes. So let's load this one in here and feed that into color one here. So now it's either going to be showing this pattern where it does not have full transparency or everywhere else. It's just going to be showing this image. And now we need to define which colors on this image should be showing on each face by doing UV editing. So if I go over to the UV editing, uh, let's go ahead and make this material preview on the right so we can see how it's going to look with the material added on. And we can hit tab to go into edit mode and hit A to select all of the vertices. So we see our entire UV unwrapping here. And we can see that the reason we get so many rainbow colors is that color one here is uh, because the UV unwrapping uh, stretches across all of these colors. So we need to condense each face into a single color if we want one color to show on each side of this cube. But we want to do that also without uh, changing the UV unwrapping on this ornamental pattern. So you can see right there, it's already unwrapped uh, nicely. So we don't want to change the UV unwrapping there. Okay, so if we go over to the UV editing tab and make sure that you are viewing in material viewport shading over here so that you can see the material output. And then if we select all of the points in edit mode, we can see that the UV unwrapping of the default cube 
uh, will stretch across this palette image. So how we can get around that is by creating a second UV map and then having one UV map feeding into one of those image textures and the other UV map feeding into the other. So over on the shading page, I'm going to take this bottom node and we're going to add in a UV map. So search for that. I'm going to take this bottom image texture node, the pattern, and I'm going to hit Shift A and we're going to find a UV map node. So I'm going to put that over here. And then in this drop down, I'm going to select the default UV map for the object. And now we need a mapping node. So I'm going to search for mapping. And now this UV is going to feed into the vector mapping. And then the vector is going to be the import for this ornamental pattern. So after it takes a second to load, we should see it's exactly the same. But now we know that this specific UV map is going to control the output for this pattern. So when we create another uh, UV map and we use that for the other texture, changing the UV unwrapping for the underlying texture in order to have, let's say, one color on each face is not going to affect this pattern output. So we can have them both unwrapped individually. So let's go over to the UV editing page on the right over here with your cube selected. Go to the object data properties and let's create a new UV map. So I'm going to want to show this UV map as the active render. We don't have any change because we haven't changed the unwrapping for the cube. So with all the vertices selected, just select one and hit A to get all selected. Go over here to the left for the UV editor. Hit A to select everything, S to scale, and zero to scale it down to a single point. And uh, when we do that, you should see only one color on all of the faces at once. So we can hit G to move and then X to move it along the X axis. And we can just move this over to any color we want to show um, for this cube or another object that happens to exist on this color palette. So with this UV map on the right in the object data, I'm going to double click it and I'll just call this palette EVs. And the first one, I guess I'll just call that base UV. So now we can continue working on this palette UVs. So we want each of the sides to be its own color. So I'm going to hit three to go into face select mode, left click on each of these faces. And then with that face selected over here in the UV editor window, you can hit G to grab and X to scale along the axis and just change this to whatever color you want it to show uh, on that face. So let's just make this one white. I'll select another face, left click to select it, G while within the UV editor to move it, and then X to make it move along the X axis. So let's move this over, I guess to like that purple, just do another color with this side, X to move it, let's make it a green, grab this side, let's bring it all the way over here to the browns, and I guess this one as well, G to move it, X to move it along X, and let's put it on that color. So we have six different colors selected for the different faces of this object. And as we can see, the uh, pattern stays the same on all of them because it's using its own UV map. It's using the original UV map, and this is going to be using the palette EVs. So to make sure that this never changes in the shader, let's go over to shading. And we need to do the same thing with the UV map and the mapping node up here for this color palette. So I'm going to select these, hit Shift D to duplicate, pull them up here, connect the vector from mapping to vector for the uh, color palette image. And then we just need to change the color palette from UV map to palette UVs. And now we should see the material output correctly. So as you can see with that, um, when you have this mix node and you're feeding your pattern in, you don't have to have just one color be the other output for whatever's behind this pattern, but you can really set up nodes and have whatever you'd like there. You could even mix this part over with other image textures or procedural noise textures, stuff like that. But in a nutshell, that's how you can take PNG patterns, use them on your materials inside of Blender and getting them to output as a layer on top of everything without necessarily affecting anything underneath it so that you can just combine so that you can combine different elements on the same faces of your mesh. So I've been Chris. I hope all of you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future video content.